Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Chakudash. Yahweh is name, Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be, Ba'in, Hada, Shalom, name, Yahweh Shai, be named with the God and Son, meaning He delivers, He saves, or Chakudash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders, great Muslim, that were well, peace and blessings to the elect and the nation of Israel. Shalom and Ababa Ball, back at it again with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Shai, Lord, when those lessons is edifying. Another edition of quick breakdowns. Just gonna get straight to it through the spirit. Uh, this is uh, Psalms 47, and um, the main point that I wanted to get was verse five. But I'll just start from the top. Psalms 47 and five. Actually, I'll start at verse five. Psalms 47 and five. The Most High Yahweh Shemashai has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Okay, and this is really alluding to the day of salvation, the day of judgment and destruction, as the scriptures call it, the day of doom. All right. Which shall be the end of this time That's in the book of Second Andrews So why is it say the Lord is going to go with a shout With the sound of a trumpet Because Yahweh Bashem Shai all right, Is going to execute judgment upon this place And when Yahweh Shai returns He's going to lift up a shout And call the elect unto the chariots Alright But he's also going to You know the trumpet's going to be blown The seventh trumpet Which is the completion of the Lord's judgment Okay and Yahweh Shai is going to gather his elect. And he's going to, uh, you know, execute fierceness and wrath upon Esau's kingdom. You know? This is Isaiah chapter 27. In verse 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown. Right? That seven trumpet is going to be blown. All right? When Yahweh Shai returns, which is the completion of the Lord's uh, judgment upon this place That's why it's known as seven Seven is completion And they shall come which were ready To perish in the land of Assyria Meaning what? You know, we're, the Lord's going to deliver us Lord willing we're of that elect From America Alright, because America represents Modern day Assyria Modern day Babylon Rome You know, so on and so forth, man Nineveh, alright You have to read it in context And it's called Assyria Because Assyria had us in captivity Pursuing to the northern kingdom you know, just like how Babylon has us in captivity, both southern and northern kingdom. All right. <clears throat> it says, and the outcast in the land of Egypt. Right. Because we were outcasted over here. Really, our homeland is the land of Israel. But the fact that we're here in the Americas just proves the curses are real because the scriptures say we would be scattered. And the Lord's going to gather the scattered of his, uh, the dispersed of Judah, as the scriptures say, he's going to gather the scattered Israelites abroad. James 1 and 1. From the four corners of the earth That's in Matthew 24 Alright It says And shall worship the Lord In the mount In the holy mount At Jerusalem Right Because the Lord's going to give us our land back And we're going to worship him continually <clears throat> This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 Starting at verse um, 16 it says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. Right, so when the day of judgment, Yahweh Shai is going to return with that shout and with the trumpet. It says, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. So those who died for Yahweh Bashmiel Shai, those who died for witnessing Yahweh Shai, they're going to be raised up into the chariots first and get a new body. Okay, then the elect which are left alive are going to be raised up. You know, and it says, then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, right? The elect who are left alive to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, right? So that's basically going into the salvation day. It via the chariots Why are we going to meet the Lord in the air Because he's going to beam us up Lord willing we have that elect number Into the chariots Which were the world known as the so called UFOs Alright But in that process He's going to lift up a shout And what is that shout going to be comprised of Him calling his elect up into the ships Revelation 11 goes into that Revelation 11 and verse 12 And they heard a great voice from heaven Saying unto them Come up hi hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. That cloud is representing the fathership that Yahweh Shai is coming back in. It says he comes with clouds. The clouds is alluding to the UFOs, so-called UFOs, which are really the chariots of the Bible. 
and why are they like into a cloud because like it says in Exodus 13 21 cloud by day pillar of fire by night the chariots have the technology to cloak themselves in the form of a cloud you can look it up Esau calls it a lenticular cloud it's when a cloud is shaped like a UFO all right when you look up a lenticular cloud L E N T I C U L A R lenticular cloud you'll see that the chairs truly do take on the form of clouds man okay and there's actual video footage of clouds which are really chariots you know uh, moving in very low to the ground moving very irregular moving at fast speeds clouds don't normally do that so what is that really that's really the chariots doing that all right cloaked as clouds you know and I'm going to show you the greatness and the power of Yahweh Bashim Shai because <coughs> the scripture said the Lord's power is very great and most of his works among men are hidden. You know, here it is. You, Jake want to be seen. Jake want to get the uh, the razz and the dads, right? They want everybody to see him stunting. But the Heavenly Father, he's great. All right? he, he's exceedingly great, you know, and he's low key with his moves. He's very mysterious. You know, so that's really that's really the way to be. And you know, one one tribe in particular that I noticed moves like that as well is the tribe of Judah. All right, not saying that other tribes don't move that way. All right, but one tribe that I know through the Spirit that moves very, you know, discreet and will and and you know really will have a lot more than they show you is the tribe of Judah, man. All right, Judah is the type of tribe to act like they're broke. All right, but the whole time they got a million dollars stashed away, but they'll act like they're broke because, you know, it, 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 they're, they're just discreet like that. And they want to see who's really for them and who's not. You know what I'm saying? Because it's easy, like you say, everybody's a friend of him that giveth gifts, roughly paraphrasing. So it's easy for everybody to be cool with you when you got something they want, you know. But when you seem like you don't have anything they want and people still show you that respect and that love, then it's like, all right, yeah, you are actually worthy of it. You know, it makes sense. Don't get me wrong, but... That's one tribe I noticed that actually moves like that. But the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shemashah, is the same way. All right? Which is spiritual, you know? But um, all the tribes do things that the Lord does, you know, ultimately. But it's just different facets of it. You know, we're, all, we're the Lord's children. We are the sons of Yahweh Shemashah. We are the sons of God. All right? So anyways, let me continue. It says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. So Yahweh is literally going to say that to his elect. Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Meaning what? Everybody's going to see the day when the elect get beamed up in the ships. That's Wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. Right. Because they're not going to be expecting the elect to get beamed up in the chariots from the destruction. You know, hey, they're, they're not going to be expecting to see a so-called black man crack the clouds. You know, the angels come back looking mighty because they've been told otherwise. So when they see it, they're going to be troubled with terrible fear, man, because it's going to be a terrible day. You know? But the elect are going to rejoice. All right, this is our Jeremiah 25 and 30. This is really going into what the Lord and his trumpet and the shout, right? <clears throat> Jeremiah 25 and 30. This is really more so the shout. It says, Therefore, prophesy thou against them all these words. Prophesy against who? These other nations including the nation of Israel and say unto them the Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation right when Yahweh Shai comes back man he's going to be you, you're, going to hear, you're going to hear the passion of Yahweh Shai when he gets down and destroys this place man alright he says he's going, to he's going to cry like a travailing woman alright <laughs> when a woman is pregnant and she's giving birth you know, you hear a woman screaming and groaning and, ah, hey, I was shy. You're going to hear him roar from on high, man. All right, when he brings the destruction from this place. It says, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes. 
against all the inhabitants of the earth, right? It says, as they that tread the grapes, because in Isaiah 63, Revelation 14, goes into those grape clusters that are going to be destroyed because the harvest is ripe. Okay? Esau represents those grapes. The wicked, all right, represent those grapes. They're going to get destroyed. It says, A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. For the Lord hath the controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. See it, the Lord. That's right. That's right, man. So there's going to be a lot of death and destruction in these upcoming times, man. And Yahweh is going to call up his elect to watch the judgment from on high via, via the chariots. All right? But since he's going to come back with that shout, man, shouting for his elect to come up hither. All right? I believe there's another scripture where it talks about, like, the Lord telling the elect to come up hither, but and I, maybe I'm tripping. I know I got the one in Revelation 11 already, but I, I feel like there's another one, to be honest. And besides First Thessalonians 4 and besides Revelation 11. If I'm tripping, then, you know, Salakia, but I feel like there is. But nonetheless, Psalm 78 and 65. Then the Lord awake as one out of sleep and like a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine. Right, because... You know, right now, it seems like the Lord is sleeping, which he's really not. There's a lot going on in the earth right now, which shows that the Heavenly Father truly, Yahweh Shemeshach, truly is working. But, you know, we're, we, we're not seeing Esau's kingdom being shaken up majorly. We're not seeing this place fall. You know, the elect are still downtrodden in the society. Okay, the winner, the wicked are still seem like they're winning. You know, so it seems like the Heavenly Father is taking the back seat and he's sleeping, right? But it says he's going to awake as one out of sleep because when the Lord comes back for that judgment, it's going to be like, damn, like where, where was the Lord this whole time? That's why the wicked end up going to say, where's the Lord thy power? Because the Lord ain't been showing his hand like that. You know, he ain't been judging the earth so terribly to the point where they calling him Allah Shadia like they did in the past. He's really took the back seat and let things play out. Right. But the time is going to come where the Lord's going to really show a lot of divine intervention. And people are going to be like, damn, like, it's like the most high as if he was awakened out of sleep because they're going to see the power of the Lord being manifest in these times. It says, and shouted by reason of wine, right? Because, you know, wine can make a man's heart merry. All right. But also twofold, that wine represents the wine of the Lord's judgment and the destruction from the grapes. All right. And it says, and he smote his enemies in the hinder parts. And he put them to a, perpetu a perpetual reproach. And that's what he's going to do to the nation to eat them. Okay? That's exactly what the Lord is going to do to the nation to eat them, man. All right? So that's what's coming, man. The Lord going to come back with that shout and with that judgment. You know? So that's really the point. The point has been made. All right? If I find that scripture, Lord willing, if I, if I you know, remember correctly... If I find that scripture, then I'll put it up in the, uh, I'll put it up in the comma board, Lord willing, you know, but, um, with that being said, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. I Bashim El Shai, Bashim Kakadash, double honors to the apostles and others, great most, and that rule well, peace and blessings to the elected nation of Israel, Shalom, and Abba Kwa, Kwame Yashara.